Goldberg with Sky View Weather and Gary Miller Sports. You're watching KCAL 9 News at 8 in high definition. A family tragedy in Long Beach. Neighbors say a father of three killed his wife and then killed himself during a children's sleepover. KCAL 9's Lonnie Rivera has the story. He was basically running out of the house, but hyperventilating, saying, fix my mom, fix my dad, fix my parents. Neighbors in this Long Beach community stood around trying to take in this awful scene here at the 2000 block of Florida Street. A couple living in this house were found dead Sunday morning. My one great grandson usually spends the night on Saturday night. And so, yes, he spent the night, and I guess this morning they got up and found them in the bedroom. Laverne Waffle is close with the family. She says the couple were her grandson's godparents. Last night, the house was full of children, three who lived here, plus her grandson who spent the night. They went to sleep about 10 o'clock, I guess, went upstairs, went to sleep, and when they came down this morning, they found it. Long Beach police arrived on scene blocking off this portion of the street for much of the day. Detectives found no sign of forced entry. At this time, we have no evidence that there was any gunshots or gunfire. As for any hint of problems, neighbors say they had no clue. My kids play with their kids all the time. They're always riding scooters and skateboards in the neighborhood. I feel so sorry for them. They're just heartbroken. Neighbors tell me a priest and social worker spent much of the morning consoling the couple's children. In Long Beach, Lonnie Rivera, KCAL 9 News. A Newport Beach homeowner made a strange discovery after finding that her home had been burglarized. KCAL 9 Orange County reporter Michelle Geely has the details. They weren't beautiful roses in a crystal vase. What this bizarre burglar left behind were pots of flowers and cut stems wrapped in cellophane, the type found in a grocery store. Uh, it looks like the suspect entered through a master bedroom skylight, entered the residence, placed flowers throughout the house. Uh, a couple of uh, notes were left behind. Newport Beach police say when the 36-year-old woman returned home from a trip over the weekend, she quickly realized someone had been inside. The flower pots were strewn under bed, along with this note saying, is used regularly, presumably in reference to the resident's bed. The other flowers were placed on the blades of a ceiling fan and on top of bedside lamps. Detectives have learned that the victim and a boyfriend recently split up. They suspect he is the culprit. You know, right now we take it as, as a residential burglary, meaning at this time it's unknown suspects committed this crime. But it does appear that it's probably more than likely related to an ex-boyfriend, which would steer us more towards a stalking crime. If it is the ex-boyfriend, detectives want him to come forward and tell them what his intentions were. Had the woman walked in on the burglar, police fear things could have turned violent. As we see in the news every day, you know, violent acts are committed upon our loved ones. So that would be the big fear. We want to make sure that he's not going to harm our victim. Michelle Geely, KCAL 9 News. A new search this weekend for missing millionaire Steve Fawcett. Searchers in Nevada's backcountry are tracking what may be radar trails left by Fawcett's plane. The search is centered near Hotel Magnet Baron Hilton's ranch. That's where Fawcett had been staying. Fawcett vanished September 3rd after taking off on what was supposed to be a short flight. After 75 years, the Los Angeles church has finally completed a huge stained glass window project. The final two windows were dedicated today at St. James in the City Episcopal Church. There are 28 sets of windows which depict bits of Los Angeles history. This project began back in 1932. Now, back then, the panels cost $6,000 each. The final two panels ran $75,000 apiece. A special blessing was offered today for our men and women in blue as part of a Sunday Mass at Our Lady of Angels Cathedral. Cardinal Roger Mahoney sprinkled law enforcement badges with holy water and offered a special prayer for first responders. Send down your blessings on these badges and on those who wear them. Bless these servants who so generously devote themselves to helping others. Police Chief William Bratton was among several uniformed members of the LAPD at this morning's mass. Now this is a new generation of gamers and they're a little older than you might think. Some senior citizens are abandoning their bridge cards and crossword puzzles for a little high-tech entertainment. KCAL 9's Alfonso Van Marsh introduces us to some of the gamer grannies who love their new wireless exercise. 
This is how seniors keep alert at the Sunrise Community Living Center, playing video games that react to body movement. From age 80 to 103, they're setting the walkers aside for something more competitive. It's probably a great help to us in coordinating eyesight and body movement and that sort of thing. Card games and a cup of tea are still on offer here, but after a staffer brought his kids' game system into the center last month, many of these experienced hands preferred to reach out for the wireless handset. So now you're right down the middle. Playing tennis and bowling on the big screen. No, I don't think so. Oh, triple strike. Oh, must be my lucky day. <laughs> 82-year-old Iron Peach is so good at making her on-screen bowler move to her whims, she regularly scores triple digits. So that makes you the official oh, yes. champion. Oh, yes, I'm the champion, yes. <laughs> Sunrise administrators say the games are so popular, they're buying the $400 units for all their centers in England. It's so important that, that every day our residents get the opportunity uh, to, you know, to use those joints and use the muscles that perhaps if they were sat down reading a newspaper, uh, they wouldn't do. Feisty 87-year-old Gladys Harrington doesn't sit anywhere for too long, but today she's taking a back seat to offer me some bowling tips. Go back over a bit. This is my first time with the game console. Fortunately, I have an excellent instructor, but it seems with my talent and ability, my new nickname is Gutterball. I can't get a break. These uh, geriatric gamers may no longer golf the back nine or serve an ace on the court. This high-tech entertainment designed for a younger generation, providing physical and mental challenges for the young at heart. Alfonso Van Marsh, Edgebeston, England. Well, scientists say handheld electronic brain games that work on logic and memory are also excellent ways for seniors to keep mentally sharp. All right, coming up, stretching your dollar. Where to find low-cost, high fashion. Also, a former wrestling star pins the competition at the box office. And Britney's embarrassing MTV Video Music Awards performance hits a new low. Live your dream during Disney's Halloween time at Disneyland. Come on, you'll miss all the fun. The place where dreams come true. September 21st through October 31st. <sighs> hey, are you from around here? We are. We're Foster Farms chickens. This is so California. Yeah, now people have to think we're California grown. <laughs> You're the owner of a Blue Plymouth Belvedere with Arkansas plates. Come to the front desk. You're being towed. <clears throat> Uh, Foster Farms Fresh Chicken. Always natural, always fresh, always California grown. Belvedere? <laughs> Who drives the Belvedere? <laughs> <laughs> Our state is struggling to pay for vital services like education and public safety. So Governor Schwarzenegger negotiated new gaming agreements with four Indian tribes. The tribes will pay a much higher percentage of their gaming revenues to the state and be allowed to grow their gaming business. This will provide over $9 billion to fund essential state services without raising taxes or putting us further in debt. $9 billion. No new taxes, no new debt. It's that simple.
Even a full-size luxury SUV designed to embrace the driver should be a statement in refined amenities. Optional seating for eight and technology for everyone. The new QX56. Exclusively with XM satellite radio with XM nav traffic and a complimentary three-year subscription for both from Infinity. Britney Spears' performance at this year's MTV Music Awards has been selected as the most embarrassing dance sequence of all time by the UK TV Gold Poll. Some called her performance and lip-synced song a crime against choreography. Spears has been plagued by personal crises, including a custody battle with her ex-husband and her latest mishap, a charge of hit and run and driving without a valid California driver's license. Dwayne The Rock Johnson scored a box office touchdown this weekend with a family-friendly comedy about sudden fatherhood. Hi, everybody. I'm Peyton, the one who'll be going to bed early from now on. <laughs> the game plan took in nearly $23 million, winning the number one spot at the weekend box office. The Kingdom, starring Jamie Foxx and Jennifer Garner, came in second. Resident Evil, Extinction, Good Luck Chuck, and 310 to Yuma round out the top five. James Bond's favorite Secret Service secretary has passed away. Actress Lois Maxwell was the original Ms. Money Penny, playing her in 14 Bond films. The BBC says she died yesterday in Australia. Former Bond star Roger Moore said he knew Maxwell had cancer, but her death comes as a shock. Lois Maxwell was 80 years old. Time now to see what's coming up on KKL 9 News at 9. Lena Wynn is in the newsroom. She's going to tell us what's ahead. Lena. Linda Glenn, thank you. New tension between the U.S. and Iran tonight over Iraq. Tonight, the political standoff and is the U.S. ramping up for military action? Plus concern that consumer spending, which drives the U.S. economy, is stalling out. And the U.S. Supreme Court starts its new session tomorrow. See which cases could impact us all. It all starts at 9 o'clock on KCAL 9 News. Now back to you in the studio. Thank you, Lena. Coming up, designer labels are showcased on the fashion runway, but now they're coming to a store near you. The San Diego Chargers trying to get back to 500 the as they hosted the Derek lowly Johnson Kansas City Chiefs this afternoon. There, Gary Miller will have the details later in sports. And tips for parents and their college-bound kids trying to pick the right campus at the right price. We'll be right back. just to witness celebrations, you become part of them. Mexico, beyond your expectations. El Pollo Loco. Hot news. El Pollo Loco is having a fire sale. Stop it now and get nine legs and thighs for just $6.99. That's right, nine legs and thighs for just $6.99. El Pollo Loco. El Pollo Loco. El Pollo Loco has two new tacos taco lovers are talking about. Oh, I love these tacos more than Ali. <laughs> That's me. Taste them and see. What kind of loco taco lover are you? Turn right. The Baxters use their Verizon Wireless Navigator every weekend. And so do their kids. Free to get GPS turn by turn directions without limits, they easily find all kinds of places. No one's ever lost, and no one ever finds out. What's going on? Nothing. Because with a Verizon Wireless Premium Plan, unlimited navigation, messaging, access to videos, and more are all included. Sign your family up today, and when you buy this Crazer, you can get three razors free. Verizon Wireless. It's the network. The odds you'll catch Mother Nature on one of her bad days? Nine to one. LR3, created for the one. Visit your local Southern California Land Rover Center now during the summer sales event. California's water, vital to our state's character, economy, and environment, is in crisis. Not enough rain and snow, not enough places to store water, or channels to deliver it. 
And the Delta, hub of our water storage and delivery system, can't withstand a major earthquake or Katrina-type flood, a fact that threatens 25 million residents with massive water shortages for up to two years. Learn more at calwatercrisis.org, because we can't take water for granted. In high definition, this is KCAL 9 News at 8. A million and a half high school seniors have begun applying to college, and many find the task overwhelming. It's no picnic for the parents, either. John Smirak is the editor-in-chief of Choosing the Right College, a resource for developing a plan that fits your family. He shows us what to look for in terms of academics. We look for a specific core curricula. We, we think the one thing, way to know a lot about a college is what courses are mandatory for all students. If finances are main concerns, Mirac suggests you consider state universities. Here in California, we're fortunate to have two good state universities, the UC and the Cal State systems. Parents might also make sure college isn't one of the top ten party schools. And prepare your child for rejection. And, of course, it's always good to have a backup plan. For more information and advice, go to kcal9.com and click on links and numbers. You'll find a link to Choosing the Right College website. I just look for one that didn't have to require calculus. Meantime, it uh, used to take a lot of money to dress in high fashion, but not anymore. Some top designers are proudly making clothes with price, price tags that will not break the bank. KCAL 9's Cater Lee has more. We're talking couture on the cheap and from high-end designers who are used to seeing their expensive creations on the runways. Now they're in a store near you. She's dressed Jennifer Lopez, Jessica Simpson, and Mariah Carey, and you could be next. Vera Wang, the A-list designer known for her bridal and couture clothing, has entered an unlikely marriage with discount retailer Kohl's. It actually excited me to be able to work with clothes that start anywhere from $40 to $130. I mean, that's a whole new market for me. Her frugal fashion line includes this brocade car coat, sterling silver jewelry, and ballet flats. She's just the latest top fashion designer to go down market. It's truly the democratization of fashion. Ralph Lauren at J.C. Penney, Sarah Jessica Parker at Stephen Barry's, and Todd Oldham at Old Navy. I love this dress because it's, it's you know, encrusted, but it's also light. It has a light Isaac quality. Mizrahi was one of the first fashion designers to bring high style to the masses when he stitched a deal with Target. Three times a day I see a girl walking down the street with a shoe or a bag or a dress or a skirt or a top that came from Target. It doesn't tarnish the image. If anything, it creates even more aspiration. Um, for the designer's goods. I just call it a fashion color gray. And the fashion conscious get runway styles without runaway prices. H&M is about to roll out a line from Roberto Cavalli. The benefits are clear. The retailer gets designer clothes, customers get affordable fashions, and the designer becomes a household name while making a mint. I'm Cater Lee. Now back to you. <laughs> Making a mint indeed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, Kai Goldberg joins us right now, and uh, you've been promising us a wonderful week. Yeah, we've got a good week. We've got going to have a little bump in the weather, but that's okay. It's not going to rain on you, but you're going to see some cooler weather headed your way, as well as lots of cloud cover for the beginning of the work week. Let's talk about that in a second, but we'll take you outside. A beautiful Sunday night. There's a shot of Santa Monica Beach. That is up in Malibu looking towards Santa Monica Beach. And again, clear skies out there. Not a lot of marine layer whatsoever. Marine layer completely out of the picture, at least for the next couple of days. We won't see any fog here in your forecast until about the time we get to Thursday and Friday. But all eyes tonight are up towards the north. We've got Doppler radar for you and take a look. A big low pressure system bringing in lots of heavy thunder showers all the way from Seattle right down into northern California. This particular storm moving in towards the Sierra Nevada range right now. They're going to see a good dusting tonight as well. Mammoth Mountain saw a good dusting just a couple of days ago. So snow starting to ramp up for us right now. And let's take a uh, speaking of right now. Let's take a look at some temperatures before we get into our own forecast. Currently about 76 in Bakersfield, low 60s up in Oxnard and Santa Barbara, 70 downtown 65 currently in Laguna Niguel. Next 24 hours shaping up pretty good for us. Again, we're going to see clouds coming in tonight after the midnight hour. 60 degrees. We should bottom out tonight. Mostly cloudy after about 2 a.m. this morning. Then the clouds start to fill in even more tomorrow morning for you. 63 degrees when you wake up. Take the kids to school. Make sure you put a sweater on those little ones. 79 tomorrow afternoon. We're looking at mild temperatures. Today 85 degrees. Tomorrow 79. So you can see the cool down. Yesterday we saw 75. So today we're 
start of seeing a seesaw forecast back and forth. We're going to see cooler temperatures tomorrow, warmer temperatures on Tuesday, and then cooler temperatures once again Wednesday, hence the title seesaw. 85 on the high side, 58 on the low side. Sun coming up tomorrow at 647 in the morning. There are those clouds as well as that sh uh, shower activity moving up through the northwest right now. So, and here's that cold front stretching very far out into the Pacific Ocean. We also have some clouds further to the south. This is courtesy of Tropical Storm Juliet. That's where we're going to see some clouds coming out of that subtropical jet stream. Showers in the Phoenix area. So we do have some chance of a drizzle east of the San Gabriel Mountains tomorrow afternoon, beginning actually tomorrow morning. And here's how things start to change for us after Monday. We're going to see that cold front move through again all day long tomorrow. Then Tuesday, Wednesday, high pressure is going to start to take place. We will see sunny conditions and mild temperatures. And normally, again, we sit at about 82. We're going to start to see those temperatures in about the mid to upper 70s for you. Tomorrow, Pacoima, 84 degrees. Inland Empire, about mid 80s. Downtown Los Angeles, 79. Long Beach, 79. Redondo Beach, 76 degrees. Five day as follows. 79 tomorrow, 85 on Tuesday. A little bit cooler Wednesday, 81. Then we'll start to stay into the 70s all the way until next weekend. Some cloud cover as well as some early morning fog associated with that. But all in all, just a little bit of clouds tomorrow. We'll get out of it. It's going to be a beautiful work week. Okay, thanks a lot, Kai. Well, today was a great day for a parade. Take a look at who was out there enjoying himself in a parade today. There's Glenn. This in Lomita. It was the city's centennial celebration, the first parade in the city of Lomita in more than 30 years. Marching bands, horse groups, dance groups from various cultures, as well as Lomita's very own queen. Yeah, a bit of trivia here. Lomita was once regarded as the world's celery growing capital. The centennial is such a big event that a history book has actually been published. It traces the city's development back uh, from 1907. By the way, the celery queen, her crown. Celery? Made of celery. <laughs> quite a sight. I bet. All right. Gary Miller wishes that he could have been there to see that, I bet. Was that lay made of celery? No, the lake was not made of celery. Okay. It was a real <laughs> Hawaiian lake. It would no. be very aromatic if it was. You know, we got a lot of complaints that we're showing the Chargers instead of the Raiders. I'll show you why. <laughs> Two teams that Marty Schottenheimer used to coach met this afternoon down the five in San Diego on CBS2. With the Chiefs in town.